Well, in Athens, I was very interested to see what were the repercussions of the crisis of the Syriza government. In the US, the left especially was very excited about Syriza and what happened, and then after the referendum, depression and disappointment. And we haven't received much news. So I went and I interviewed people who had been involved in the movements that supported the Syriza government. And the most inspiring thing to me that I saw were the migrant women. Because in every other aspect, the women working in health, the, the people working in healthcare, solidarity healthcare, and in cooperative business, and, and without middlemen, self-organized um, groceries, there was a discouragement, a sense of frustration and disappointment. But with the migrant women, there was a sense of continuing energy, continuing um, imagination. And the, really the most inspiring thing to me was how the, the Greek people were being inspired by their work with the migrant people to get involved again, get engaged again. And they real, I realized really the migrants bring with them an imagination about how do we reorganize life um, because they have to remake their entire lives. And that is inspiring the left movement even as they feel discouraged. And the lesson, it seems, coming from Greece that I take with me back to the States is that before one can take power at the executive level, one has to make a different kind of power at the grassroots. And that's what people in Greece are doing today. And I think that's a little bit of what we're talking about also here in Germany. It's not just about changing power at the top. We have to transform entire systems of social relations and economics and governance um, starting at the bottom. Well, I think it's happening. I mean, in Athens, we saw people organizing communities in such a way as to purchase directly from the producers and bring prices down and use the profits from the local self-organized businesses to support community projects, cultural projects, but also political projects. You see people getting involved in making the decisions about how they will care for their own communities through self-organized medical clinics. And I think we don't have a roadmap, but we have more and more experiments initially to respond to a need, but with a bigger agenda, um, finding new ways to meet community needs. And I think as we experiment with finding new ways to, make communi to meet community needs, it will emerge what that bottom-up model of change looks like. Uh, but we, these are not times where we can start at the top and work down. We have to start at the bottom and work up um, by necessity, but I think it's also the best way to do it. Well, the big protests in the US, I can speak about in the day after the inauguration of Donald Trump, were very exciting to me. Were they perfect? No. But they were exciting because for the first time, we saw that women were the first people to express their resistance. The, 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 the resistance to Donald Trump was led by women. And that is a new order of events. We have always had our left resistance led by other issues and other people and then adding on women, women as a kind of addition. This was the front line protest is a women's protest. And it's a new type of feminism that is saying, we are not an additional concern. We are the front line concern. I like to say that women are the canaries in society's coal mine. We are the warning system. We are the absorbing, the shock absorbers. And women all across the world have been the shock absorbers, uh, shock absorbers for neoliberalism. We've worked more hours, we've taken more jobs, we've done more home care, we've provided more health care, we've done more raising of children, we've done more caring for the elderly. We have absorbed all of the contractions of the state 
with austerity and all of the race to the bottom economics of neoliberalism globally. And what we are seeing, I think, now is women saying no more. And many of them come from the movements, of, again, of, of migrant women, where they have a history of a kind of feminist, um, indigenous and um, agricultural movements and campesina type feminism, um, but also a feminism that comes from queer politics and that comes from labor politics, where it's not just about our bodies, it's about the role we play in the body of society um, and the role we could be playing in the remaking of society, because that's what we do all the time, is we make social fabric. Um, and we have a very frayed social fabric, and women need to be in the front of, of making a new one. Well, I would say we need, um, we need many types of media. Media is a plural noun, right? Uh, it, it's, a, it's a plural. And we need pluralism more than ever in a period of authoritarianism. You could look at it a different way and say we have had one version of a story of our lives that has come to us from one sort of media. Little different, sometimes this newspaper, that newspaper, this channel, that channel. But in the US in particular, which I know best, you know, it's all essentially the same. It's focused on power in Washington. It's focused on money in Wall Street. It's focused on really the Fortune 500 most powerful men who we perceive as individual players. We need media that tells a different story, that tells us about power in communities, that tells us about money in communities, in, in new ways of organizing economics, and that expresses the reality of life that is an interconnected reality where we don't make change as hero individuals, we make change as movements and as groups. And I think that the media that we have right now that is burgeoning on the web is the media that connects different organizations and different ways of thinking. Um, that's what we need. What we have is the big monolith of money media telling one story, and then we have very niche media that is, again, sort of echoing people's already held beliefs. And I think what we lack is the media that is a place where many different beliefs can meet. Um, and that's the challenge, I think. Uh, we, need, we need pluralism, but we need connection. Uh, so I want to see more television programs where different points of view not fight, but talk in a constructive way. More newspapers that ask real questions, both of politicians and of movements. More self-criticism um, in our movement groups, but places where they can do that without being seen as in a defeat against um, the opposition. We're good at fighting. We're not very good at talking in a constructive way, and that's what we need, I think.